If you watched the official Republican response to the State of the Union address and you don't live in the state of Virginia, you might have noticed something a little strange, a little unfamiliar about it. Like for starters, who is that guy? Good evening. I'm Bob McDonald. Eleven days ago, I was honored to be sworn in as the 71st governor of Virginia. The Republicans chose to deliver their message to the country, their rebuttal to the State of the Union, not a recognizable party leader or a long-serving member of Congress, but rather Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, a man who today is working on day 12 of his incumbency. The governor delivered his message from his state's House of Delegates, surrounded naturally by other people you'd never heard of or seen before last night. In the course of his very high profile, hi there, nice to meet you with the country, 11 days Governor Bob McDonnell quoted Thomas Jefferson and scripture and his kids and his dad and one living Republican. The Senator-elect Scott Brown has said, we should be spending taxpayer dollars to defeat terrorists, not to protect them. So the official Republican response to the State of the Union was delivered by a guy who has been in office for less than two weeks, who shouted out one other Republican in his speech, and that Republican has not yet taken office. It's almost like the Republican strategy is to make us all think they didn't exist before about two weeks ago. Hey, look at us, we're brand new. And that might be why Republicans became so enraged when President Obama referenced the previous Republican administration in the State of the Union. Watch Senator John McCain here, see if you can read his lips. The effects of the recession put a $3 trillion hole in our budget. All this was before I walked in the door. Now. Now. Just stating the facts. You see what he said there? Blame it on Bush. Darn these meddling kids, don't they know we're erasing that history? What we're hearing tonight is the BIOB, let's call it that from now on. Blame it on Bush. Uh, whatever has gone wrong, let's blame it on Bush. You may not want to blame it on Bush, but honestly, just, I mean, frankly speaking, how else do you explain the three trillion dollar hole in the budget that really was there before Obama took office? without talking about George Bush. I mean, I understand why they want to start over and just be judged on their record of the last 11 days and forget everything that came before that, but they don't get to. Um, the record is the record, and sometimes it is fun to pin the record on the president. Come on. I can't believe we're doing this. Welcome to Pin the Debt on the Donkey. The challenge, figure out which presidents saddled America with the most debt and which presidents didn't. Our two contestants this evening are Trisha McKinney, the only member of the Rachel Maddow Show staff who has actually been on a game show. There she is with Alex Trebek. Uh, and also um, Kent. It's great to have you both here. Uh, you get, don't get that in a bad way. And <laughs> Kent Jones, I mean. Hey! All right, um, you got, you got your, your fingers on your buzzers here? You ready? Here we go. First question. Which modern president added $4.9 trillion to the national debt? Bill Clinton. Jimmy Carter. I was hinting at this just a moment ago. It is uh, George W. Bush. Mm. Yeah, George W. Bush grew yeah. the debt by $4.9 trillion. Sorry, you guys. All right, moving on. Next question. Um, which modern president actually turned a deficit into a surplus? Ronald Reagan. Uh, George Bush Sr. Uh, yeah, both wrong again. Mm. Very sorry. Yeah, uh, the correct answer is uh, Bill Clinton. Yeah, Bill, Bill Clinton. Clinton started his term with a deficit, ended it with a budget surplus. All right, so far, you guys are really bad at this. Um, but the final chance to redeem yourselves. Your pay is not contingent on being good at this. The last question, which modern president nearly tripled the national debt? 
Trisha. Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Trick question, Barack Obama. Uh, uh, no. Uh, no. Wasn't a Democrat, not even uh, close. It was actually, little known fact, the 40th president of the United States, legendary fiscal conservative, Ronald Reagan. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, mm. uh, thank you. I appreciate your this help here. Good. It's all right. Good game. Well done. There's yeah. parting gifts, actually. There aren't any at all. Uh, but, you know, Ronald Reagan, um, not alone here. If you, if you look at the last 30-plus years, you will see that it is Republican presidents, look at this, who have all added more to the national debt than modern Republicans. Even George H.W. Bush grew the national debt by a bigger percentage than President Carter. Now, I understand the temptation to try to make a guy who's not yet in office and a guy who's been in office 11 days, the new marquee leaders of the brand new, just established Republican Party. I understand why that is more politically appealing than running on the kind of record that gives you graphs like we just showed. I get that. What I don't get is how the Republicans get talked about by the press and the pundits as if they deserve that, as if they are somehow the natural party of fiscal responsibility, given that their record really doesn't look like that at all. I don't get it. I really don't. But we do have Tracy Ullman joining us next, and that I get. Stay tuned. More Pin the Tail on Sutton. Come on.